Aircraft making a condensation trail is very similar in many ways to when you go outside on a cold day and exhale, you create a condensation trail. That little cloud is a condensation trail. Now, if you take a two mile walk on a cold day and you can turn around and you can see your condensation trail tracking all the way back for two miles, that's how crazy it is to think that what we're looking in the sky is actually condensation trails. The contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30. It takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus. There's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals of ice warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away and it never lasts more than a minute. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal, they're not natural. There's something going on, I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. It's gotta be some outside influence doing that. Thank you. I'm here to give you testimony that chemtrails, they're not contrails, are indeed real. They're spraying almost every day. I watch the clouds and watch the spraying program going on. I want to tell you that we're in very great danger from the pollution that's coming down over us. And we've been led astray by the military industrial complex. And they're responsible for the clouds creation and weather manipulation programs. They're dark operations. That's why they're not out in the media. I look around and I see people are starting to look up and see this. Many times I've spoken about chemtrails, and I get this blank look on my face. What are you talking about? I'm saying, look up. As a pilot, but before I fly, I look up. And so, boy, they're really out there working. When you look up at the sun and you see a white haze, that is aluminum floating in the air right now, and it's coming from the aircraft. There's a huge amount of uh, aluminum being found because these sprays have aluminum, strontium, barium, manganese. And uh, there's a lot of argument that aluminum is very common to be found. But aluminum is only common in a bonded form. It's not common in a free form, and we're finding high rates of free aluminum uh, in the soil, which is not natural. The metal compounds that are being used are environmentally dangerous. We need to be monitoring them. We need to be testing them. Okay, these previous guys, I've watched exactly what they do, and yes, they are correct. I've seen exactly the same stuff, so ditto marks on those. You want some figures? Okay, latest water test, tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. So 13,100 is pretty damn much, folks. It used to be zero, then it was 100s in the 2000s. And then in, uh, since 2010, it's into the 1,000s and the latest 13,100. In the snow on Mount Shasta, pristine Mount Shasta, 61,000 micrograms per liter, four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from if it's not coming from the soil? We have clouds in the sky we've never seen before. Almost every day I'm seeing clouds I've never seen before. And NASA has been even named a few of these new clouds. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting, but NASA is a corporation. I want you to know that. Uh, NASA has also uh, conducted a research program in what they call metallized fuels. We're actually putting aluminum oxide right in the fuel because it has two atoms of aluminum and three atoms of oxygen. So during the combustion process, it releases all that oxygen and dramatically increases efficiency, but it leaves the aluminum in the air. We got things coming from sky down, and it's a huge, huge problem. Because as it comes down, what happens is a couple of things. Is that it actually is in our air, we breathe it. And as we breathe it, it's actually gonna go up through our nostrils, into our brain, easiest access to our brain frontal lobe. The contaminants that are in, that have been identified, which already been mentioned, are aluminum. Aluminum is the number one neuro, uh, free radical generator to the brain to cause early apoptosis, which is early death of brain, and it begins to set off the scar tissue, which we call the amygdalin, which is, a pot, which is part of the uh, chemical matrix related to Alzheimer's. I'm a neurologist practicing in Reading for 17 years, and in the past five years, I've seen the number of patients 
with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and other neurodegenerative diseases tremendously increased, almost quadruple. Uh, I became interested in chemtrails about eight years ago when I was in Hawaii, and the Hawaiians are really being very vocal about it. I concur about the increase in number of Alzheimer's. They have been able to take the aluminum and micronize it, which means it'll stay up longer. But it also means, and I don't know if any of you have noticed some metallic taste in your mouth when they're spraying, but you inhale that, it goes up through your cribriform plate and into your, through your sinuses and into the brain. As you heard, to spray nanoparticles, very small particles. These nanoparticles, they basically trigger a programmed cell death in the brain, and that is the ultimate path we see in Alzheimer's. That's problem number one, because when we look at the Alzheimer issue, we say those are the old. The real problem is, and the real scare I have, is as I am a father of two, I am a grandfather of three, so the drama is, is our children. ADD started in the 70s. Autism was not on the radar. There was no documents, there was no information. It was one in 100,000 children. Today, what we have is one in 48 boys. I was part of the early group that was looking for aluminum in ADD and ADHD. And all of those children that started to develop those phenomena had high levels of aluminum. When we figured out protocols to detox them out, to free the body of those particular contaminants, what happened is that their brains came back. When we do this to the age, it doesn't come back as quick, but it will come back. But I'm seeing Alzheimer's in 56 years old. Back in the 70s, Alzheimer's when you were 80. If you remember eight to 10 years ago, there was this big move to get rid of aluminum from underarm deodorant, because it calls Alzheimer's. <laughs> Look what they're doing to us now. I want to give you a little bit of history on the background behind nanoparticles has been described before. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. It's very small. In fact, if you have particles, say, that are 40 or 50 nanometers across, you can take and line 50 of them up next to a single red blood cell. These things are extremely tiny. They're pervasive. The collapse and decrease of agriculture is something I worry about even more than the previous.